Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff is here, Tom Cowan. I'm delighted to say Ian Ferguson is with us as well to talk football and uh, we'll go back over some of the clubs that he's played for and get his thoughts on how he thinks they're performing. Now, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. Thanks to so many of you subscribing and, of course, fantastic figures, not only on our YouTube channel but in the downloads on the podcast as well we're absolutely delighted you could join us and give us your thoughts we'll be talking european football of course no point in dwelling too much on the hearts game uh Ruffy, because quite simply it's kicking off at six o'clock we just um are hoping for a positive result to get it back to tyne castle for the jambos to do the business because europa league football could be a huge change for them Oh, it's super. It'd be great for the Hearts supporters who've bought into everything Hearts have been doing in the last four or five years, you know, and to go back to Ten Castle. I know they had 18,000 at the, a, a league game last week, but the place will be absolutely jumping. So we just hope that they can bring something back. You know, we, we spoke about it in the show the other day. The teams like Hearts and Hibs and Aberdeen have just been letting us down with the coefficient, but this is a chance for Hearts to, to get us back up there. Yeah, Ian, you're of an age where you remember actually playing in Europe with Hart and Midlothian. It was a time when I think a lot of people looked to Scottish clubs out with Celtic and Rangers as the norm playing in Europe. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, I had a wee bit of success with Dundee United as well, and uh, going to Hearts, Hearts, it was a regular uh, feature of the season, playing in Europe. Uh, I remember vividly we played by Munich in the quarterfinals of the UEFA Cup and could have went through. We won leg victory at home and then we, we lost 2-0 away from home and we John Cahoon had a chance to, to get that away goal at that time with a county double and that would have put us into semi-final of the UEFA Cup. So again, it, it shows you in the past it was a very regular occurrence for, for Hearts to be in the, the European <laughs> tournaments and uh, a great place to play, Tyne Castle. I said on a, on a European night, these guys, if they get a, a result today, and bring something back that they're still in the tie for the second leg, then the Hearts fans are fantastic in a European night and they'll they'll be uh, giving them a full backing and, and I think they could do well. Yeah, I, I hate to mention the, the finance all the time, but it's so crucial to most of the Scottish teams, Tam. If Hearts could get that sort of kitty that the Europa League delivers, then suddenly Robbie Nielsen can go for a higher calibre of player again. Absolutely, and certainly the guys that uh, he's brought in have been good. I've been thoroughly, I know he didn't come in this season, but Barry Mackay, I think, has been sensational for Hearts so far. Lauren Shankland, you know, you just knew he was going to score the goals. And um, I think the great thing about Lauren Shankland, he even um, made a, a testimonial game seem decent or worthwhile, because when he played in Gary Locke's testimonial, uh, scored a double. Normally these are just kickabouts, we bit a panto, oh, you bring the wind zone to take a penalty or whatever. Yeah. But he showed that he meant business, if you like, for day one. And um, it's great, and it'd be good if they could do something. I mean, obviously, Muddle, we've done our bit for the coefficient, um, Ireland's coefficient. Yeah. Uh, we helped put as much as we could there, you know, which I thought was a lovely gesture. Mm -hmm. But uh, aye, we need uh, the coefficient points, it, it does help, you know. But um, I, 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 I fancy Hearts, and you know what? See me thinking about this way, Hearts were seconds. Seconds, one touch of the ball away from this being a fantastic start to the season for them. I know it was a great fairy tale story with Martin Boyle coming on and getting equaliser, but you know what? what does he, and, he, and he even thought you know that late goal for Hibs could have knocked uh, the 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 window to parts a wee bit, but they've just continued on, been playing some great fat man. I I think they'll get at least a draw tonight. Yeah. Okay. Fingers crossed. We'll discuss that in greater detail on tomorrow's program. Give us your thoughts on how you think Hearts are going to fare in that match over in Switzerland against FC Zurich. Fingers crossed we get a positive result from that for the second leg. It's okay. on the BBC Scotland channel tonight, yeah. live. And that's what we've missed, Ruffy, yeah. by the way, because sometimes, I don't know about <laughs> no, you, Ruffy, I've, I've missed what's on the BBC, <laughs> no, no, have no, you? No, 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 listen, <laughs> listen, I'm only pointing that out so you tune in, because Stephen Thompson is hosting and there's a good chance Hearts could get pumped five now at half time and the big man might make another tit of himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only now, reason I can, I, can I just say to you, uh, you know, um, everybody makes uh, everybody makes the, one of those moments, questions, oh. statements that you think to yourself, "Wolf, reel myself back in." But at, fi at five nil, <laughs> I had a sneaky feeling the tie was over, Ruffy. Did you? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think he obviously once he'd said it, he couldn't call it back again. <laughs> He'd realise what he yeah. said. I'll tell you, fair play to the pundit. I think it was John Rankin. John Rankin, John Rankin uh, kept a straight face. Uh, you know? 
brain. He could have just, he could have just walked his head out of Listen, Tom, well, you're not the first. You won't be the last. What was that? Any perlers for yourself, Peter? Looking at your long, oh. illustrious career. Oh, try to say to one of the reporters. This is the funny thing about it. When you, when you, when you're in your career, you want to try and you know. It's like every football. You want that first touch to be great. You want to do all the drills that you've done. You want to try when you're on live. And I, I think I was at the STV. My first live report from a game was at Ibrox, and at half time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd left. I think I'd uh, I'd gone from Radio Fourth and Radio. I was working for Radio Fourth and Radio Clyde, and I went to STV and big, De big Derek at half time. <laughs> <laughs> he's, making, he's making faces as I'm live on the deck. You're thinking to yourself, this is this is the big moment. Shut up, you know. And he's he's making all sorts of gestures, but things happen, and then, you know. And I can remember um, Scotland Today. We were on Scotland Today, and they changed over from uh, the old oh, tape system no. to the computer system, yeah. oh, and they I... call it Black Monday because, quite simply, every package that John Mackay introduced crashed never played so the sweat is lashing <laughs> off me the sweat's lashing off Shireen Ninjiani and John Mackay and the three of us are there and then the next minute sweat was lashing off your what? <laughs> no <laughs> he's only back he's only back he's only he's going to be sent off he's not even he's shot his appearance but honestly and they, they came to me about five past six which is just unheard of in the sport and every package that I played played out because I was still using the old tape system and I must have had a sports desk of about seven minutes which is unheard of and I, and I just said and, and that's the sport and John said have you not got any more <laughs> <laughs> but you you have those the thing is I mean because Big Raman still get post-traumatic stress <laughs> when you watch him <laughs> Is there any chance you can stop this slaughtering everybody in the vid? I'm here. No, it's, 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 oh. it's all STV hangs on. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you even better than that. We'd, we'd bought the rights to the commentary and we've spent all this money and we've got the whole thing PLZ in the early days in our madness and uh, we had the, all the cameras on us ready to do the commentary to <laughs> For two seconds away, I can hear the theme music kicking in, <laughs> and Ruffy kicked everybody off here. <laughs> the plugs, everything that was us wiped out, and he's got that big ball face going. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, well be, my best one was I can't remember the player's name. They remember we were looking for a striker for Scotland. The boy Aberdeen was banging in goal. <laughs> Oh, the big guy. Yeah, uh, we need to have a look at him. <coughs> what was his name? The kind of striker we want. And he just looked at me and went, he's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> it was an absolute howler. Anyway, apart from anything else, um, listen, that happens. It's as simple as that. Can we chuck in a wee bit of trivia now? You know I like that as well. Yeah, go on, apart from talking up the BBC, <laughs> go on. getting a yellow card, I like chucking in one for the, the viewers as well. Go on. Who can tell me the connection between Ian Ferguson Uh huh. And Cher. There is a direct connection between you know this? Ian Ferguson and Cher. I'm struggling a wee bit myself here. Yeah. Oh, the hang okay. On. <clears throat> okay. Um, we'll think about that. We've got a quiz question for you. I'll get to it in a minute. But that's a that's a fantastic one. It's um, not that Cher used to have a flat in Motherwell. <laughs> <laughs> I was racking my brains here. <laughs> is, yeah, is it? Is it I think he could sing everybody on the show in the first two minutes here. Is it the Cher? Or just Cher? Yeah, Cher. 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 Right, okay. It's a genuine question. All righty. Um, listen, thank you to so many people have joined us Andrew Davis I've seen you say sorry I interrupt but see me say is it the share <laughs> I can I can only ever tell this to kind of boys in this neck of the woods who will know him you know the, the kind of club comedian that he's now resident out in Tenerife Billy Porter yes yeah. you know Billy Porter yeah. right De dead camp comic and all that gay as a goose but he's, he's fantastic I, I used to follow him I used to go Angels in Uddingston That's on right. Thursday night Hamilton Palace the Dunster but on a Monday night right well um, one of my pals was out with his family out in Tenerife, right? And they're walking around and they're for this neck of the woods as well. So it's him, his wife and the old uh, mother-in-law. And they're walking about and they're looking for the entertainment one night as they're walking about. And they see, oh, the Kenny Rogers guys up there and all that, you know. And you fancy that, more? You know, no, no, I don't fancy that, you know. They got up another one, shit, tonight, share, all that, right? And I fancy that, you know. No, I don't fancy, it's no fancy then, you know. And then they finally come along, the pub... And there it is tonight, Billy Porter, you know. So he's right, well, what about this? And she says, I'll no be the real one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Billy Porter, uh, tribute uh, act. <laughs> uh, now, uh, well, I'm going to read out a few oh, messages. Sorry, no, 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 it's interesting to you because uh, because this is a uh, morning team. I love the show. I watch it every day on the app in New Zealand um, uh, when I'm working. Uh, when are you going to do the predictor on uh, the show so we can all have a go? We're going to actually, as I know, look at them. <laughs> We're going to actually have a go and let the punters oh, get involved as well, Tom. Right. We're just going through the mechanics of it at the moment. But by the way, you've had an absolute belter last I know, week. But it, it shouldn't hide the fact that we're, I'm still due you the meal. We're trying to get that arranged. Yeah, any uh, chance? It's been hard over the summer, and everybody's yeah. been away and away. And I want to get you all the pundits together, take you to the meal you deserve. Yep. And um, and we'll do that. But I have it a wee, not a bad start to the season. Yeah, absolutely. You've been good. Hugh is lagging behind everybody. Now, here's the other one. And thanks to Patrick for this. Um, he says, my father's uh, got a brilliant man cave. Um, he's got a life-size bust of someone that you'll recognise. Um, he's also in this man cave got football-related stuff. Um, and he's also got some great musical stuff in this man cave. I'm not going to get any no, further than a life-size <laughs> bust. <yeah. laughs> I asked people to send in their man caves. <laughs> and, there's, and there's some. Did you have. Have you got a man cave? You know, play, play, no, no. A place where you would watch the football and you'd get your strips up. No, that's called the pub for me. <laughs> right, okay, right, all right. Well, said, well yeah. here's, here's Patrick's dad's um, man cave. And by the way, I mean, honestly, have a look at this. I mean, he's got guitars, he's got a, an album signed by someone from Fleetwood Mac in there. He's got a coffin with a guitar in it. And he's got a life-size bust of uh, Kiefer Sutherland from The Lost Boys. I mean, it's absolutely Where outrageous. Is this? this is, I think it might, I think it's in Canada. And there it is there. I mean, there's Kiefer Sutherland in the, in the actual cabinet. And there's all sorts of ghoulish stuff. He clearly likes his horror movies too. But the man cave, I mean, that's a bit special, Tam, isn't it? Ah, is, that's a stoter. I've, 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 I've toyed with the idea of one of them, but I'm a bit like Ian. Uh, tonight, for example, I'm going to dash away for here, meet up with one of my pals, and it's a perfect opportunity to see your pals as you get older when yeah. there's a big football game on. So I like going out to the boozer yeah. and, uh, and watching the game there, you know. Well, but I fancy one of them. Absolutely. Uh, getting a man cave like that is absolutely brilliant. If you keep that guy's address out, it'd get tanned tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're not doing it. That's why I said it's in Canada. Um, anyway, Eighth uh, Street East, <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick, uh, for sending in your dad's man cave. It's an absolute belter. If you've got any, please do send them in. We'd love to. And thanks to uh, Stuart Ramsey has joined us, Ryan Blue. Uh, lots of people. Nice to see Ian uh, Ferguson on the show. And Davy Scott says, a guy said my wife looked like Cher. So, um, Davy, if you could just tell us... Um, it's a direct your... connection between Ian Ferguson and Cher. Yeah. And uh, every 10 minutes, if nobody gets that, will drop in a wee extra clue. No. Okay, fine, magic. Okay, now, uh, James Tavernier signed a new deal. Um, Ian, good move, very popular boy, took a bit of flight when he first started, but, you know, real fans' favourite, and, and I think uh, our captain there has etched his name in history. Oh, absolutely, I think it's a, it's a great move for James and the club. I think he's, you quite rightly say, when he first came to the club, he had a, a wee sort of period where people weren't convinced because he, he goes forward that much that he was leaving some defensive holes behind him. But I think his defensive plays come on leaps and bounds. I think John Lundstrom coming into the team and helps that as well. But he's such a a, a positive for Rangers in, a, in an attacking sense. I mean, the amount of goals he scores from a full-back position, I mean, it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, and I think it's a great move for both the club and James. I think he's very settled here. And I think he can, where would he leave to go to? I mean, he's yeah. playing in front of a... Uh, a crowd of 50,000 every second game that love him to death and yep. they, they're now convinced and again the, the, when he captained the club a couple of years ago he went in the league and then that just takes his, his name in history and uh, I think he's he's decided that it's the best place for him and I'm quite glad that he's it, Does it not surprise you know that a, a club has not come in from I mean they must, it does they must look at this guy yeah. and think you know what usual story with a big European sat a big English team and they must think oh, we, can, we could get him for a Scottish club for relative washers you know I'm astonished because I think he's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. He'll not score as many this season, of course, because Bobby Madden's now refereeing down south. <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, he's, he's, he's got a deal till 2024. 
um, and now it's extended. Uh, I don't know what clubs are on. I don't. Know, why don't Rangers just tell you how long the deal is? The the, the press release says he'll be at Ibrox for the foreseeable future. So mm. he's there till twenty thirty nine, roughly. He'll be there, you know, doing the ambassador mm. role and everything. Is that fair? Yeah, I think it's just like Ian said. You know, you have to say it yourself. No, as the grass greener elsewhere, and he obviously has decided it, hasn't he? You know, he's everything he's got at Rangers. Obviously, his wages, playing in front of the crowd, and everything. And he's happy, and at the end of the day, that's all you want to be. Was there a move you regret it, Ian, when you were actually like, you know what, why did I do that? I was very comfortable where I was, I had a decent lifestyle, enjoyed my day-to-day -day business. Probably not, Tam. I mean, I think I, I moved for the, the right reason. I never moved for anything on the football reason when I did move. Uh, I, I would never regret playing for any of the clubs that I played for. Uh, things didn't work out at a couple of them the way uh, that I would have hoped. So probably halfway through the deals, I'd think, well, I should maybe have stayed where I was, or if if I could have went to another option, another club. But again, I wouldn't. I would never regret playing for any of the clubs I played for. I, I left. Thankfully, I, I scored goals, so I, I left a mark on the majority of them. Aye. Uh, so. No, I wouldn't regret but, but, but it. The one that got away then, was there ever anybody that came in for you as we're suggesting <coughs> could have happened with Tavernier? There was a time, well there was a time obviously, uh, there was one I knocked back and I don't want to be at Hearts for a number of months and me Rob had went to Newcastle yeah. and things didn't work out for John down there. He came back up to, to Hearts and I became sort of surplus to requirements, although I started reasonably well and the fans and everything had taken to me and stuff. So I had the opportunity to go to Aberdeen. All right. But uh, at the time, uh, there was a joint managers up there. It was Jockey Scott and uh, Alex Smith. Yeah. And unfortunately, I met Alex Smith. Oh. All right. So uh, <laughs> I was getting, I went and met them in Northern Arden. Ian Donald came in afterwards, and I'd been speaking to Alex for ten minutes. And all I was interested in was, so where am I going to be playing in the team? It was, yeah. The money was immaterial, really. We were offering me a deal, and I was going to go and sign for Aberdeen. And at that time, it was the Aberdeen, Willie Muller and Art McLeish, Jim Bett, all these boys, Charlie Nichols. And he said, oh, you'll not be playing. He started there, and I thought, well, what am I going up to Aberdeen for? He says, uh, you have to uh, get your fight in the way into the team. But I just left on the United, had two really successful years here. Went to Hearts, six months. And... Thought all I had to do was go and meet them. If I met Jockey Scott, Jockey was a player and a coach at Dundee when I started, and I've no doubt I would have signed. But then, if you look back on it, the the goal I scored for Hearts against Bayern Munich that would never have happened. Yeah, I, might not, I might not have moved on to Motherwell, my yeah. local club, and and won the Scottish Cup there. So everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So is there a is there a club where you you wish just picking up on that point that you should have played longer? You wanted to be featuring more. Well, I would have loved to have featured more for, uh, like, some other I mean, I, I fell out with wee Tam at the cup final, and it's quite, I, I documented it. Uh, I fell out with him, and he never really sort of forgave me for that, and I had a, I had a couple of years where I was in and out of the team, so I would have liked to have played for my, my local club a wee bit more, but uh, that just wasn't to be, just yeah. so a, a wee kind of clash of personalities with Tommy. I had one. Yeah, okay. Um, it's a brilliant show today, Ruffy. Everybody's just throwing grenades. Huh? It's absolutely <laughs> fine. My pals always ask me because they know that I know Ruffy. They always say, because you're synonymous with Partick Thistle, but you were in Nahar with Partick Thistle, but they always say, Ruffy, you think Partick Thistle, but he was at three World Cups. So they think, surely the sky should have been the limit. What was, did you have a near well, the, way, the way back then, there wasn't any agents. You know, there wasn't anybody. You never knew. You just were called into an office and said, oh, there's somebody inquired, but we think you're, you better stay in here. They'll get another club. But there, there are occasions, obviously, we Betty, before he passed away, told me I could have been here and been there, which didn't make things any right. any worse. But you know, that's the way the time. No, the worst one was Middlesbrough. I, right. I, I went and played the home, inter home internationals and John Neal from Middlesbrough phoned me up on the Thursday and he said, after the home internationals you'll be a Middlesbrough player. So I went away and I played Ireland on the s Wales on the Saturday, Ireland on Wednesday, and England on the Saturday and I turned up at Hamden uh, for the England game and I walked in to Hamden, so like an hour and a half before the game and Alec Cameron came up and said, you must be gutted. I oh. says, what are you talking about? He said, Middlesbrough have just signed Jim Stewart. Wow. Then I said, well, first of all, could you not have told me after the game? I said, <laughs> <laughs> I knew him the half before it. I mean, that's, that's the way it was. Yeah. They wanted the money up front and 
Right. They wanted to pay yeah. off something silly. Yeah, strange. It's a sliding doors moment, isn't it? Um, on that point, with James Tavernier that we were talking about, um, here's a good quiz question that I think um, might get you thinking. Who is the last defender um, to actually win a major European Golden Boot? Um, Elf. Uh, it was a big question. It, it was it's actually. Not as good as the it, shouldn't one. Actually, it's right. it shouldn't actually say on the thing in 1994 <laughs> um, because that gives it away. But uh, that'll give you a right clue. It was 1994. Who was the last major defender to win? Um, a European Golden Boot. Uh, so have a think. We'll give you an answer at the end, and hopefully you'll tell us about Ian, well, I'll drop Ian, an Ian, Ian and Cher um, as well. Uh, just out of curiosity, we've got to get your thoughts on it, Ian, because you've mentioned we mentioned the fact that you played uh, for Rangers as well and played some good European nights that you experienced in the Blue of Rangers. What did you make of the game against PSV? I thought it was a very tight game. I thought PSV were very well organised. You'd expect that from a, a Dutch side. Uh, I think they had the, the physical attributes up front and in midfield, I think, kind of dominated at times against... I uh, mean, Rangers lost two set pieces, two corners, and they lost two goals. So I think they had a, a definite height advantage in there. I thought Rangers did very well coming back from a goal down to uh, take the lead and then couldn't hang on to, to that lead till the end. But I certainly don't think they're out of the tie. I think they've given themselves an opportunity. They've proven over the last two, three seasons that going away from home holds no fears for them. I think they're, they're well organised. And again, we Alfredo Morello is on the bench. He's making his comeback. He's been out for a while. He's been that talisman in Europe. I think if he gets himself match fit, who's to say that, that they don't come up? They have match winners in their team, especially away from home in Europe. Yeah. And I think uh, they're certainly not out of the tie. It was a good game to watch, Tom. I mean, the only thing was... I, I, I had 2-1 Rangers and uh, I didn't have the howler with the goalkeeper, but... Nevertheless, as Ian said, the last thing you want is just those two stupid corners, you know, set pieces where they lose the goal. But again, beautifully poised, and as we were saying earlier, for the me and Ian's of this world, they don't have a man cave and you like get out for a wee drink and watching a game. <laughs> that one's absolutely teed up now yeah. for, uh, is it next week? Is it Wednesday or Tuesday night? Wednesday. Wednesday night. So that, that, that's definitely a fixture. That's a pub. A couple of pints, watch it and cheer on the Scottish team. Yeah, absolutely. Is it, have you got a good feeling about it? Uh, I must admit, I think Rangers... No, to answer you uh, in short terms, because I think they, they maybe needed a lead you know, there, you know, because yeah. um, they, they, they look pretty uh, good. Um, usual old thing we talk about, European teams and all that technique, etc. They look to have that all the way through the team. But, again, you flip that way, as Ian just said about their brilliant away record. Um, but I, I, think, I think they're right up against it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I always like to, to look at players, Ian, that could maybe win it, can maybe be game changers, you know, that special player. Uh, the boys come in, again, we're talking about Tavernier coming in for criticism. I, I was reading boys' question on why they signed Cholak, but he's, he's scored the goals, what do you make of him? It amazes me that the, they've been questioning that, really. I, I thought for the, the minute I saw him, he's in and around the, uh, where you want your strikers to be. Rangers, over the last number of years, have been putting balls in for left and right. They've not had a target man in there, somebody who sniffs out goals. We Fredo comes short. He scores goals that you would never expect him to score. Whereas the big boy Cholak is hungry. He's in there fighting the centre-halves, in between the sticks, and if the ball comes in and drops about it, he's very sharp and he looks like a natural goal scorer to me. He also works very hard, so I think... The criticism, if he's had any, I don't understand why. I think he's, he's settled in very well. Four goals in his last four games. The Livingston goal, I thought, I mean, he was very unfortunate. I get chalked off as well. So it could have been five out of five. I think if anybody else in the country scoring five goals out of five games, yeah. they're raving about him. So yeah. any criticism that would be labelled at him, I don't understand why. Yeah, it could potentially be a match winner. Although, I don't know, you, I don't know of, of all the teams that you played for, and we'll get Ruffy's thoughts on this as well, you always like a player who's got a trick. I love a player who's got a bit of skill, it's whether it's a number 10 or a, or a winger. Um, the boy Gakpo on the left-hand side, I mean, he not big, not makes for fun, but he could yeah. drop the shoulder as well, couldn't he? Oh, I think they had a few match winners in their team, and I, I think, uh, like every uh, European ties especially, if you're playing away from home, I think sometimes some of the European teams play better away from him. I think they, they hit you on the break, they suck in a lot of pressure, they're very comfortable on the ball, and they hit you on the break. And I think Rangers have been doing that over the last couple of seasons as well. I remember vividly playing with Dundee United against British Mission Gladbach, <coughs> and we drew nothing each at Tardis. 
and they were all celebrating after the game. Mm-hmm. And myself and Ian, Ian Redford walked <laughs> off the park saying, what are they celebrating for? Because we always score away from him. And we did. Yeah. And I think if you have the confidence in your players and you have players like maybe Ryan Kent or Alfredo Sholak who can pop up with a goal, yep. then you know what? I, I, I think you're always in the tie. You just have to go and play your game. They'll be very well organised. And you have to have that confidence that you can go abroad and get a go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for all. We're trying to read out um, uh, messages uh, from uh, people with their thoughts on the game. But uh, as ever, there's lots to talk about. We've got uh, guests. We always like to, to bring in special guests. Um, and we'll try and read Thank out you. your comments. <laughs> try and read out your comments. I'm waiting well. for Cher coming in. Well, I was just about, I can't wait. I can't, <laughs> set clue. I can't wait for the link. Set clue. It's in his kiss. That's it's, worse. It's, it's, <laughs> it's in his kiss. It's in his kiss. Right, okay, that's the second yep. clue. Okay. Um, connection. connection between Ian Ferguson and Cher. No trick question. Straightforward trivia pub quiz question. Right, okay, it's in his kiss, which is an old song as well, uh, Ruffy from. Maybe the celebrating 50s. a goal or something like that. Something. Yeah, kiss somebody who looks like Cher. No, no, I <laughs> can't <laughs> see that. He's been your hill. <laughs> same, <laughs> the same village as me. He's new, you'll not be doing any of that. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, it's in his kiss. That's a clue, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, for years I was a quiz master doing it at Town Hall in my life. Come on, I, I can do that stuff. You know, it's no more clues than that. All right, Tom, I'm happy with that. Right. Uh, and don't forget, we've got that uh, James Tavernier uh, question as well. He won the. Uh, That's a great question. He won the Golden Boot. Who's the last defender to win the, the Golden Boot? I'll tell you, we're talking about signings, Tom. Scott Allen signed for our both. Mm. It was a surprise right. two-year deal. Um, they're delighted to get him. I thought he was. I thought he was at least. Some of the bottom six might have looked at him. I know, I know. Um, the one that got away, maybe. Um, I find it astonishing, um, without in any way trying to offend um, our broth or their supporters, I find it astonishing that he's gone to Gayfield. Um, you know, uh, any time Scott Allen did play, and he's already been a man of many clubs, you could never really tell, who, has he got a parent club, or is he, you know, is he a free agent, or is he, he seems to have been here, there, everywhere, on loan. But whenever they put the focus on him, um, on the telly, you know, they always show him as being a brilliant, brilliant player. And I remember even at the point they were getting flack for it one night in sports, and I think they spent about 10 minutes on a pass that he made at Ibrox against Rangers. And it maybe over egged it a wee bit, and I think it must have been Rangers fans saying, Oh, come on, move on, you know. But he's a, a class act, and I would have loved Mullow to take um, a chance on him. Um, I thought it would have been brilliant. And we know that he, you know, he's got this on going. You know, a slight health issue that uh, hasn't been fully resolved about with, with his, his heart and stuff, you know. But, uh, you know, if he's going to go and play and run up and down the park with our growth, I would have liked to have seen him run up and down the park with Motherwell. Yeah, absolutely. He's a good player. Can pick a pass. Um, sometimes if you've got midfielders who are not known for the running, Ian, you stick runners around them. But I think I, I really do like Scott Allen. I, I would associate him more with Hibs than anybody else. Yep. And I've watched him go from club to club and maybe they'll find somewhere that settles him down, Tom. And I think, yep. I think back to somebody like Chick Charlie. Chick, who was really good on the ball and wouldn't they run about when yes. he didn't link the play up. But I mean, if you go to our broth, Dick Campbell, our broth, obviously got them doing very, very well and progressing through the leagues. Yeah. And I watched them last the uh, last season against Rangers and a big physical team. They might yeah. need that wee bit of guile. Uh, and Scott yeah. Allen might think, you know what? Again, it might it's not always down to how much you're getting. Uh, it's are you going to be happy? Are you going to be playing and playing in a team where the manager has every confidence to uh, play every week? So I think that would I mean, probably be the decision. Later, but I mean, that's a coup yeah. for them to get Scott Allen and it shows you yeah. how well they had done last year and how folk now look at our growth and how they look at Dick Campbell who's dismissed as a dinosaur and all that nonsense, you know, so, I brilliant, good luck to our growth then. Yeah, well, if you don't get him, you may get Robert Snodgrass. I, I just read that and I thought to myself, I'd love to see Snoddy back now. He's got a, a sweet left peg on him. And free agent, yeah, yep. uh, makes sense. Only, what, five years ago, uh, £10 million, who paid that, West Ham? Yeah. Yeah, so you'll be keen on Snodgrass if your man, was it Moyes that bought him? Yes. Was it? Uh, well, no, he, no, he wouldn't have been, been. He, he wasn't there then. But that's enough. Um, but uh, he's Aye. a good player. So oh, absolutely, Snodgrass, and you know? he's got, what, 20 odd Scotland caps? Yeah, you know? I remember Aye. him as a youngster at Livy, oh, he was just a great And I, You know what, I know what I would like about Robert uh, Snodgrass, and I've said this about time to time, when players have come to him, or a certain type of player, um, I think he's got something to prove. 
you know, because the way his career has panned out, you know, I think he'd love to come at Mullow and put on a bit of a show and say, look, I've still got it, you know. Yeah. Um, well, and what age is he? Well, uh, I think he's mid, he'd be 33, 34, maybe. But again, by the way, Ian's old pals, two most famous at Mullow, Bobby Russell and the late, great David Cooper, you know, yeah. they were the boys when they came to Mullow. They exactly. were magnificent. But by the way, Ian, on that point, and this is the perfect point because we had him as a, as a regular pundit on this programme, um, it's quite simply experienced players and players that have played at a higher level. We Charlie Adam on now. Charlie, yeah. he couldn't get him running about, but Charlie could pick 30, 40 yard passes, yeah. see something that nobody in the park could see. But he also made, and you'll appreciate this, he made a ten yard pass look easy. Yeah, and I think if we go back to the time when I joined Model, I think I was just turning thirty. David Cooper, Bobby Russell, Craig Patterson. Yeah, we're coming into teams with Tommy Boyd just coming through, Phil O'Donnell just coming through, young. Uh, I mean, there was loads of them, and that mixture of experience and youth really helped those kids. I mean, can you imagine young Phil O'Donnell on the left hand side of midfield playing alongside David Cooper yeah. with the knowledge that Cooper had. Tommy Boyd, who would Tommy would put the gas burners on down the left hand side. David Cooper would find them with any pass and see a pass better than, and I'm not saying make top, but Tommy would gain confidence for that because he had somebody playing alongside him who would encourage him to make these runs. Yeah. Because I'll find you, just you run, I'll find you. And it was a great dressing room to have because the young boys come through, kept the old boys kind of fit and healthy and young and the, the older fellas would pass on experience and just say, calm down, we get into semi-finals or a final and we, we won the cup. Just get them on a nice even keel and the boy Snodgrass, if he comes tomorrow, I think from one of my old clubs, I think that'd be a fantastic signing with his experience and, <laughs> and obviously he's got goals in him, he's got that leadership in him that he's played at a very high level. I think he'd be a fantastic signing for Mullow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, apart from Coop, because I mm -hmm. think he was uh, you know, in a league of his own, um, especially in the twilight of his career, because uh, as Tam knows, my brother's a, a Mullow fan and when he signed, it, God, he, week in, week out, he couldn't stop raving about him. Oh. He was just like, you know, this guy, it was, he, was just going, he was just going down to Fir Park to see David Cooper. Oh. That was his only, that was, he was just looking thinking, I'm going to see this guy who, who stood out from everybody, he could play passes and, he, and every Mullow fan thought the same thing. Was there another player that came in another side that you thought oh wait a minute this guy's me I didn't realise he was that good well again nobody would make the, the same sort of impact on, on a club that, that Davey would the second season I was at Morrow I was going to third part to watch him as well <laughs> um, to be honest impact from players that I played with uh, and played against. I mean, when I was growing up, I mean, I'm the youngest player on the team. I had the likes of Jockey Scott, who was coming to the end of his career yeah. at Dundee, who played up front and passed on a lot of tips. My first management team was Tommy Gemmo and Willie Wallace. And I mean, Willie Wallace, for being a striker, just to get that feedback off him at training. We used to do shooting practice and he, he, he gave me one tip. He says, son, he says, I've been watching you for a wee while. He says, when you get the ball, you get an opportunity to score. Just you hit it as hard as you can, because the ball knows where it's going. <laughs> and he says, that's what I did. And I, I took him to, to task over it. I, yeah. I did that every time I got the ball. Right. <laughs> Just try to hit it as hard as you can, because y you pick it things up off somebody who's got the experience and, and the, the medals in the cupboard that mm -hmm. you go, man, he, he, you, you have to listen to that. And you have to listen to the advice of the experienced players. Was Strachan in that Dundee side? He was only there for a very fleeting moment. Uh, they shopped, they, they, they swapped Gordon for Jim Shearer. Remember Jim oh, Shearer? Right, yeah. Right. I think it was 50 grand and Gordon went up to Aberdeen, Aberdeen and, and obviously he was a fantastic player for them. And Jim came, a very lovely fellow, hard working midfield player and came into the the Dundee team, I think the phrase you could kick his granny, I think Jim yeah. was one of them boys. Ah, right. <laughs> but uh, uh, Gordon had just left, he was he was there just before I got there. Yeah, time. just the, the, the mention, as soon as you mentioned there, Tommy Gemmel as the as the manager, Ruffy, is there a player that springs to mind? Oh, if, you, if you're sitting in a dressing room and the door opens and George Best walks in, you, you, ah, okay. you, you, know, <laughs> you know you're getting somebody special. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know you're getting somebody special yeah. and, and he was special. On and off the park, he was special. Particularly in a night out, it was uh, really well, special. Just <laughs> did, you, did you feel in any way uh, maybe inept, Ruffy, because he'd been out with four Miss Worlds? Oh, no, no, no. 
<laughs> we all just like hanging about people like that. <laughs> you never know, you never know my, what my discard. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, Ruffy. Anyway, apart from anything else, great getting a wee insight there into uh, the players. Snodgrass would be a welcome addition to the game. We want to see we want to see good players. Obviously, we want to see young developing players, which is young McKinstry. You've managed to get him back. Yeah, um, makes you feel old, that one. Uh, a bit like uh, Ian, of course, uh, and myself. Um, his mum and dad were at uh, Braithurst High School yes. in Motherwell, Karen and John, and I knew them right through the school. And see when you hear your team signing <laughs> your old schoolmate's <laughs> son, you suddenly think, oh, you know, can smell the clay off your cell, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, so it's brilliant. But you know what? I saw, I don't know if you saw the wee video that Motherwell put out of his uh, arrival back at Fir Park. Obviously, oh, yeah. obviously, we've only got him in loan. I mean, he went, he went down there to Leeds and he's um, just a young boy, but. He came back and the club filmed him in the Urn East stand, in the John Hunter stand, looking at the, the seat where he used to sit with his mom and all that and with his granddad and all the rest of it, you know, and it, it was probably a great wee club, but there's another guy for a, a different reason. Um, he's, he's maybe got a point to prove, you know, that's, what I, that's what, why I'm excited about him as well, because Snodgrass and folk think, no, that's him, he's washed up, he's finished, he's done, ha, ha, 10 million, who paid that for him? He'll have a point to prove, but for McKinstry as well, being a, a Motherwell fan, a Motherwell boy, and then playing suddenly in front of the guys that he used to sit next to, he'll be wanting to turn it on and on, so it's like every kid's dream. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and again, because it, we're at that point, we've obviously... We're not dwelling too much on uh, the Hearts game because we'll talk about it in greater detail tomorrow. But uh, as far as players moving in and out, um, Ruffy, I'm amazed Billy Gilmore uh, has just been discarded by uh, Chelsea. It'll be interesting to see who actually gets him. Everton have been linked with him, Brighton. Um, certainly there are Premier League clubs that think he can do a job for them. Well, I hope he's learned his lesson for the last one. Then Norwich wasn't the the choice. I don't know if it was Chelsea's choice or his choice or his agent or whoever. But I think he has to be really wise now and pick the best team that's going to suit him. Obviously, he'll be wanting to play week on, week out. You know, I think that's really, really important. So, no, I, I, he's still got a lot to offer. We saw it with the Scotland team. So it's important for us as well with the Scotland team that he gets in a team and he's playing regular because he's got wonderful ability. Yeah, I, I mean, some players, there's, a, there's always this association with the top 5%, Ian, who never find it difficult to get a club. They're multi-millionaires. And then there, there are players that are going to be really good signings that you think somebody would snap up. Billy Gilmore's one of them. Tom Rogic hasn't got a club. I'm amazed. He left out a contract at Celtic. Seems to be in no man's land at the moment. I'm amazed at that myself because I thought he was a massive influence for Celtic. Uh, he seemed to leave of his own accord, so I, automatically you think he's leaving at the end of his contract to go somewhere that he's already chosen somewhere he's going to go. But to be a free agent and not have a club at this moment in time seems a bit strange for me. But again, I, I couldn't read too much into it. I don't know if he's went back to Australia. I don't know if he's looking to sort of wind down that way. but. I've read a few things in the newspapers, they say that he's not got a club so far and the Australian manager's looking for him to get into the World Cup squad, isn't yeah. he? And it seems a bit strange that he's not managed to find some. Yeah, there was a wee shout that maybe uh, Neil Lennon was looking at him, but um, I'm sure there are some clubs out there that, that would look to him. Celtic obviously are looking to strengthen their side ahead of that draw next week for the Champions League. Um, they've been linked with the said Hak Sabinovic. I'll not say that too many times, it'll be pronounced so many different ways, Tam, but it just shows you that of all the signings that he's made, Ange Postecoglou is looking to get one or two in before they get to that group stage that they know they're going to be playing in. Yeah, as I say, I immediately in my heart of hearts uh, look at any story like this as a Motherwell fan because the... You look at the benches now with Celtic and Rangers and they're already extremely strong. Yeah, You don't uh, like the five season. subs? No, I mean, it, no, just, it, it gives them such an advantage. You know, you've yeah. almost got another team sitting there because I know you're allowed to bring five on in three phases, but then you know what it's like. You've almost <coughs> got a, a B team sitting uh, on the, in the technical area now and you wonder how clubs are meant to be able to compete. We can't simply, you know, we keep yeah. saying 37 years now um, since neither Celtic nor Rangers uh, won the title and I don't see that ending any time soon. No, absolutely not and uh, of course Celtic and Rangers uh, potentially could be in the group stages of the Champions League. Callum McGregor was having a chat yesterday and said it would be just a measure of how Scottish football is getting better. You see obviously Rangers success in, in Europe last season in terms of getting to the final the Europa League it it was then a good advert for the for the league in, in terms of the where the quality was. So, you know, for the 
the two teams to be in the top competition, then of course it, it tells you the strength of the league. I'm not so sure it would tell us the strength of the league. Moving his yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it it's, it's a long it's story a with talent. Celtic and Rangers, but nevertheless, <laughs> I, I really don't want to get into it. Um, but uh, apart from anything else, um, you, you know, you, you look at Celtic and Rangers. Not it's not a measure of Scottish football. A real measure of us getting better would be if Hearts suddenly were in Europa League. I think that would be a sense of uh, the real strength of it all with three clubs. Suddenly we've got to look forward to all the way to December and then, as Rangers proved last season, Ian, possibly beyond. Well, I think what Rangers achieved last season in Europa League was, was amazing. I mean, some of the games, I, I'm working back at a club in hospitality and I was at a couple of the games and they were given no chance really against Dortmund and Leipzig. And I mean, some of the performances and, and the way they played was fantastic, especially for Scottish football, getting to a Europa League final was massive. I, I do agree, I think Rangers and Celtic financially are way in front of everybody else domestically, but again, Hearts and Robbie Nielsen I think has went back with the ethic that Hearts used to have very difficult to beat. It's going to be a real hard place to go and get your points at Tynecastle this season, that's for sure. And I would love to see them progressing in Europe tonight and moving further forward so it gives the rest of the league something to look at because they've not had bundles of money. I mean, a very well supported club, yeah. Hearts, and fantastic crowd that go there. But I mean, they've not been spending fortunes to get the squad together. Barry Mackay, I think, is, I agree with Tam, I said, he's get, he went down south and he's against, he's not up here for the money. No. He's up here to get a game. Okay. He wants to play. It's a bit like Billy Gilmer when you're talking about him. Would the Rangers fans love to see him come back and maybe come on loan to Rangers? I'm quite sure they would. Yeah, and I'm yeah. quite sure it would be a comfortable place for Billy to come, progress his career, get some game time, do well for the, the national team as well. And, and who's to say that? I, no, I've never heard them that, but I mean, obviously, it, it wouldn't be a bad option for him if Rangers were interested to slot him into the midfield to get him a game. Yeah. 20 hearts um, before we've got, what, 20 minutes to go or yeah. so? Of the hugely talented production team get the wherewithal just to get us up a pen pick of uh, Lauren Shankland before we finish. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'll well, just say that aloud. Okay. Well, you know, a point of son that somebody said to me recently about Lauren Shankland and I'd like you to be the judges, okay? Okay. Um, hang fire with that. Uh, Hugh Scott makes a very good point which I think is pertinent to what we've been talking about what is it it's great being on the Tam Cowan show the day. <laughs> I don't listen <laughs> <laughs> it's four guys having a natter I don't mind that like okay. another bring clue another clue, yeah. you know? yeah. oh, another, clue. clue. another clue um, another clue is uh, can I give you a musical clue yes down 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 right okay so it's top of the pops oh um, so it's a top of the pops link between Cher and Ian Ferguson yeah Right, was Cher on top of the pops when Ian Ferguson was on it with the Dundee United squad or the Marvel squad singing their cup song? Singing their cup song? Yeah, no, no nothing like that. <laughs> no. Top of the pops. The, yeah. You mean like Ruffy with no. Scotland squad <laughs> no, and appearing no, on yeah. top of the pops? No. 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 You're very warm, I mean, yeah. as well, Gav. Yeah, basically, oh. in the day that um, Ian scored the opener when Muller won the best Scottish Cup final ever, number one in the charts that day if was the Shoop Shoop right song. Oh, Shoop Shoop. Ah. It's in his kiss. Brilliant. There you are. There's the link to it. Brilliant. Ah, I like you got to tell us the 94 one or no, somebody got it. it. No, the 94 one is, uh, well, the 94 one. Here's a couple of clues. What nationality? Okay, well, that's too easy then. Oh, is it? Dutch. So a Dutch, yeah. And the question was a, a defender, a defender, the last defender, Kuhlman. penalty taker. Thank you. There you are. Oh, three kicks. Like, yeah. Didn't he say what one? Uh, I don't know what yeah, one it was. It was Ronald, Ronald. Kuhlman. Yeah, Ronald. I mean, he could hit a free oh, kick, wow. couldn't he? He was brilliant. Did yeah. score a European Cup final. Yes, against free kick. Uh, it was one of the sort of wee teams. There were Bucharest what? or something. No, it wasn't. It wasn't wee team. Who was it? It was an Italian team. They had a great. They had a great front line. Mancini played, Viali played. Juventus. Sam Doria. Oof. So there you are. Free kick, one nothing. Um, anyway, that was a good question, Tam. I like that question as well. Um, I don't mind that. It just reeks of you in the in the town hall. Huh? <laughs> All right, keep it quiet. I'll go by. Here's the first question. <laughs> See, when I hear it, it's funny. When I, I don't know if Ian made it in there that night, but when I hear the Shoop Shoop song now, there was a pub in Mullow at the time, and uh, I'm sure you'd been in it many a time, Peter. It was called Phileas Fogs. Yes. And we were up there on the night of the Cup success, and it was like Mardi Gras right up uh, Windmill Hill Street in Mullow, and all 
horns tooting and all the rest of it. It's a lovely, very, very balmy evening. And um, when I hear the Shoop Shoop song, that was blasting out. Um, and Phileas Foggs and I think all the players that night you'll, you, you can correct me in, but it was as if I think he's all kind of split up a wee bit and went to different boozers uh, to give the fans that wee buzz and you wouldn't have put your hand in your pocket I hope yeah. not well, well he didn't before he even got to the cup <laughs> <laughs> uh, that night we went back to Fur Park obviously Right, uh, and the fans all come into the stadium <laughs> straight down and to and the flat <laughs> no, Coop, <laughs> well I we share uh, and Coop came up to me we'd only been back maybe an hour and he says, why are you going to Santa Lucia? Oh, probably. <laughs> he went to Santa Lucia every day. Aye. Every day for lunch. And myself and my wife at the time and his girlfriend, we ended up in, we were Murrow Blazers, having a meal and a couple of drinks. Your old Maggie Lucia. and Miguel. Yes. Me and, and Miguel no longer wears, sadly. Aye. But I went there all the time as well. It was brilliant. And uh, We left Maggie. the celebrations and, and we just had our own wee thing. We went back up the next day. We had the open top bus, which was for me was great going through. Uh, I was just about to say you, know that. you didn't you didn't get that was you do occasionally with Celtic and Rangers, but well it was great. I mean going through where I grew up in York Hill, obviously yeah. I played with our Pat Boys Club, <coughs> and uh, we had this open top bus. I know we Andy Russell always brings a tear to my eye when he it was the, that was his. He said that this is the best day of my life. He's on the open top bus, and me and Tam both went to uh, Bradhurst down in Fordwood, and I've told him this before. It's the first time I'm doing there on the bus in the window and they get put in you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it was a great day and just a sensational thing to be able to do with my local team where I'd started it all and win the Scottish Cup I mean there was there was more than Mullow fans everybody was on the street I, mean, I think they all appreciated oh, that we crossed yeah. over the Rangers Celtic stuff and it was a, a wee team like Mullow winning the Scottish Cup so you want to have seen his face 10 minutes before the end of the bus ride wee Tommy to come over <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, never forgave him no surprise just a quick one here from DG he says what does Ian uh, think of Sands I think he's very a very accomplished player on the deck I'm a wee bit surprised that he's maybe slotted into centre half as much, I think he's, he looks like a, a good solid defensive midfield player, but they've got quite a lot of them at Rangers. They've got John Lewis from Steve Davis come in, I thought was sensational the other night. I thought he played for particularly well. Sands is very comfortable if you want to build the play up from the back, but is he the best partner for Connor Golson? I would probably say we maybe lost a wee bit of height with putting him in the back four the other yeah. night, but I, I do think he's a a, a good squad player that can play in two or three different positions. Yep, um, a couple of things uh, that we thought we'd mention to you. The, the SPFL have announced that the transfer window will uh, close on September 1st. Uh, there are some uh, Scottish clubs, obviously, who will be keen to utilise that. I think uh, there are some cup things going on uh, as well, which is going to occupy a few people's minds. Um, but clubs getting that just that extra deadline day to try and do some deals will it help only time will tell if you've got the money it may help if you're looking for someone who's just desperately trying uh, to get themselves that deal uh, of course we're getting ready for the weekend's football tomorrow on the program we will uh, talk about Zurich and Hearts and how that all panned out uh, for you guys if you want to if you're Hearts fans you want to give us your thoughts on that we'd uh, love that and also I would tell you that uh, over the next few weeks not only we'll be working on including you in the prediction we'll be giving away lots of competition prizes as well um, you mentioned the fabulous night you had uh, we've talked to you about it on many an occasion Ruffy said some special nights that night in the new Camp must have been sensational to actually defeat Barcelona am I right in thinking Lineker and Mark Hughes were playing for them? They were uh, Terry Venables was the manager and uh, Hughes and Lineker were up front for Barcelona that night and very well marshalled by David Airy and but John Holt was the man in match that night. I mean, everybody forgets. It's okay getting the goals and I scored the one. I mean, John Clark. John scored the first one and then I, I got the, the winner at, just before the end. But a, a great team performance that night. It was the one time, I think, uh, that Jim McLean didn't give us all a bollock at half time yeah. because we'd just lost a goal and away goals counted double at that time. We know he said, you only need to get one goal because we'd won 1-0 in the first leg. He says, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep keep doing what you're doing and we'll get an opportunity to score and if we get one they'll panic and to be fair they did yeah. Big John scored and they, they, they collapsed and my favourite player at Dundee United I don't know if you what was he like to play with Paul Sturrock 
It's sensational. I mean, we had a, it's 35 years ago since we get beat in the cup final, so we had a wee night, maybe a couple of months back, and we were all on stage in the, in the Caird Hall up there. And fantastic night for the fans, great for the players to get together again. So I hadn't seen some of them boys for a good 20 years. And we, Paul, hadn't been keeping too well. I think he's, he's got Parkinson's. and yeah. he, he was fantastic for him that night. Just fantastic. He sat beside me and he recollected every single thing about the game. And Brilliant. I did say, I said, listen, my, my wee pal here, if you watch my goal, Jimmy McAnally does fantastically well to win the ball back, gives it to wee Luggy on the left wing. Now, nowadays, where would they have went to? The uh, corner flag. Uh, corner flag. Uh, but thankfully for me, we Kevin Gallagher made, with the two of us just went for the box and we Paul went up to the, the, the byline, looked up, Kevin got an elbow in the coupon at the front post, which took everybody away from me. <laughs> the ball, and, and I, I knew as soon as Paul had it, he just picked me with it at the back post and all I had to do was keep it down, Not header it down and it yeah. was in and we, we, we managed to create a bit of history. I'm sure they'd done the United team beforehand. They'd won the same thing, won home and away the last time we played Barcelona. Yeah, right. yeah 60. So again, yeah. Uh, to give those fans that night in the new camp, they still remember it any time I go back. And it's a great so for, great for younger viewers, Peter. Yeah. It's, I can still watch a club in that night. It's brilliant, and you'll get it there on YouTube. It's, it's just great. It's a, it's a different era entirely, you know. And I'm, I'm glad that Ian mentioned John Holt because when I, I think you know, every club has got their kind of unsung heroes and stuff like that. Model, let's say, for example, a boy like. Jamie Dolan, late Jamie 100%. Dolan, didn't exactly. always get the credit, but a player's player, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. And one year when we were at, when Jim McLean had his, um, his column with a record, it was one of the Christmas lunches we were at, and, and out in anywhere, um, Jim, and indeed uh, David Bowman, who had brought him down to Dundee that day, John Holt get mentioned, and boy, he went, he, he, Jim, he saw Jim McLean like, almost like bursting with pride, because mm. he, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd uh, figure out in John Holt's career, and he, he raved about him, you know, yeah. but he was a guy that never ever made headlines, you know. Yeah, absolutely, uh, here's the photograph of um, oh, brilliant. Lauren Shankman. Right, so well, somebody said to me, uh -huh. um, yeah, somebody said to me recently, and it was, and it's even better if you see him fully face on, that Lauren Shankland looks like Ant and Dick. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I can see the, head, yeah. uh, the one that stands on the left, Ant, Ant. and the bottom half is wee Dick, <laughs> his face. It's, un it's uncanny. And yeah. the photo my mate sent me on the phone, it, it was the perfect photo to back that up. Right. I, think I think your pal needs to get out, mate. I know, I know. <laughs> Anybody who's <laughs> really stuck. He's got a man cave. <laughs> okay. uh, the man cave with a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's not go there. We'll never be on air again. Um, you've been in blistering for him. You need to get away in that camper van more. Uh, Scottish Premiership fixtures roughly over the weekend. We've got some belter games. It's, it's Edinburgh against Glasgow. It's Hibs Rangers. It's uh, Celtic against Hearts. That's the games we want to see. We, we keep talking up Hibs and Hearts, and this is the time when they've got to actually go there and do something. Uh, and then if they do something, then we really have to take notice that uh, they're going to be there or thereabouts. They're never going to be beating the two of them eventually. To beat Rangers and Celtic in any given day is a fantastic achievement. Yeah, one of our pundits suggested that maybe Rangers or Celtic, apart from the games against each other, might go through the season you know, as potentially invincibles, not losing to any of the other sides. I'm not so sure I agree with that when I when I look at the types of games that you could potentially play. You always got a battle with Rangers up at Aberdeen or or you know Celtic at Tynecastle. No, I agree with you. I think you've only got to look back to the Livingston game with Rangers at the start of the season, uh, and they put up a, a real good fight. They got a, their, their noses in front, a very difficult place to go, intimidating with the, the crowd on top of you and the surface. And I think uh, they've started very well, Livingston as well. So very tight place to go and get your points but uh, probably we would say that Rangers and Celtic are that far in front at this moment in time you certainly can't see them dropping too many points going through the full season without dropping many I would say up against it Hearts and Aberdeen and Hibs and teams like that will have something to say about that. Yeah, see that on that point, <clears throat> Ian, I think we had you in early on at the start of the season and we've all picked our teams that we think are going to either win the league or somebody's going to get relegated. Um, I've, uh, I think I've gone, for, I've gone for St Johnston. Um, take it down, yeah. Take it down, but I've watched them and I see the squad and I see the players coming back from injury. I'm thinking, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm, I've I'm turned into Stephen Thompson uh, with half questions. <laughs> take it down. <laughs> 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 no, he won the league. 
<laughs> Sorry, I apologise for that. Uh, but, uh, who do you think is going? Who do you think Ruffy's? Uh, but Ruffy's picked Kilmarnock. Oh. To be honest, I, I watched both St Johnson play against Rangers last week and, and Kilmarnock play against Celtic. I couldn't really see. I think Kilmarnock will struggle. For me, I think they will struggle. <clears throat> I think Kyle Lafferty up front put yourself about and he's a very experienced player yeah. but they, they shipped goals too easily for me and, and I think I think they'll be up against it to be honest. Yeah funny you should say that because obviously yesterday uh, it's the big question to not only Derek McInnes even their midfielder Fraser Murray accepts they're going up to Ross County need to start picking up points soon. Yeah huge obviously only picking up one point from the last three games uh, so I think game Saturday Ross County can't come quick enough for us because we need, obviously people know you need to start picking points up in the league or there'll be a bit of pressure on you. So I think we've got Ross County away, the mother at home. So two games that we'll be looking to try and take points. Ross County and then Motherwell at home um, they've got one point for the last three games Tom uh, you know suddenly if you go four games you start you know oh, I know I know that's the way it goes but looking at the fixtures though I must say and you did mention Motherwell uh, I'll, I'll make a statement here yeah. that will have Rangers fans jumping out their armchairs at me but then they'll settle back down and say ah fair play yeah Tom I know what you mean I'm hoping the Hibs pump Rangers on uh, Saturday because Motherwell could then go, if only for 24 hours, top of the league if we beat Lovey at 3 o'clock. So, you know, you've got that, that's great. As a fan, you can't beat that. That's when you yes. race out to the petrol station at midnight, get the paper just to look at the league. It's not unusual, though, because you have hit the top of the league before. Um, and We hit it deep into October, and again, the guys to thank for it were the aforementioned Messrs Russell and Cooper, and it was 1989, and late October, we beat Rangers 1-0 midweek at Fir Park. It was a 1-2 between Russell and Cooper for the goal, and uh, and we did. We went top of the league late October. Now, as a Motherwell fan, I'm, I'm, I wasn't kidding, as I mentioned it there. It was, we went out, we had a right good uh, celebratory drink or two, and then it was down to the uh, Calder service station, and we're all just up for the Calder Park to get the early edition daily record, because we knew it was the league table <laughs> the back and it, this is before phones and all the rest of it so you couldn't just look at the, the BBC website or anything and the tables looped up you know but down there and there was almost like a queue I kid you not there was like a queue in Motherwell fans who had all the same idea and Motherwell fans for that area and just went to get the paper to see Motherwell tap in the league brilliant brilliant days you yeah. remember where you ended up at the end of the season at the, uh, we were probably I were probably about we certainly didn't get into Europe but that's, so I'm guessing we were maybe about fifth or sixth but I'll well, see on that point uh, I mean this is we've been talking about it and slaughtered it last, seat, last week and we get pelters for it uh, Davy Martindale is looking forward to the game because he says the Motherwell pitch is absolutely fantastic just been close to a million pound in the surface and I've seen it myself and it's a fantastic surface absolutely fantastic surface and that's conducive to the players at that football club try to get the ball down and play football. Personally, I'm looking forward to going there. Again, the surface is fantastic, fantastic playing surface. We're in good form and I think it should be a good game of football, if I'm honest. Yeah, it's a lovely way Davies put it there. You know, it's conducive to playing good football. It's a fantastic pitch. Any chance you can spend a million on Earth and get rid of the Aston <laughs> Top. I'm reading between the lines there. That's yeah. what he's saying. <laughs> But again, it's a, everybody knows to be able to train whilst playing on the artificial surface is, a, is an advantage. And I think Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, Livingston have used that advantage to, to the, the best way forward, really. And, and I think teams that are going to go and play there don't look forward to that game. They want to get it over and done with and try and get your points because they're a very big physical side and they get the ball from back to front. And that surface doesn't help for conducive, to, it's not conducive to great football, but coming to play on a, a good surface at Fir Park, I'm quite sure they'll enjoy it. Have you been up to Fir Park since we got the slope fixed for the start of this season? No. You know the famous slope, yeah. as you go up the far corner flag, you know, uh, it's the, 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 what a job the, the ground staff great. have done. Absolutely amazing, you know, it's just, and, and it was, I, I don't know if I said to you, but I make the apology for repeating myself, I do, I was then up in Dundee last season, uh, a night with um, Claudio Canidia and Julian Sparone was there with him, right? And we went into the... Share, you name it. And Deck. And, 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 and we went into the, 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 the kind of 
green room but before it. Um, I'm thinking there was Claudia Canadio, Julian Sparoni, and I thought, right, my only connection here is Scottish football. Right. By way of getting a wee chat with them, and I says, oh, I'm a, I'm a Motherwell supporter. Ah, and the two of them at the same time, ah, the slope, the slope. <laughs> you know, is that right? I, I didn't realise, you don't, as a fan, you don't realise it's that bad, but I'm sure when you play on it, it was really, really noticeable, yeah. Which well, is, there, there was, there was kind of, if you look at Dens Park and stuff, the, the slope from one end to the other was like six or two, six or eight feet. Right. And nobody really seen it from from outside, right. but you would right. notice it when you were on the pitch, obviously. Again, the the condition of Fur Park was always in great nick with we Andy Russell, and again, if there was a slope there, it wasn't massive for me. Right. And that's the sad thing right? for me about the Kelly yeah. plastic pitch. It was Kelly that they always won the awards, didn't they? Mind back yeah. in the day for the Scotland's best playing surface. It was always Kilmarnock at <coughs> the same way that Clyde used to always win the match programme award, you know. But uh, plastic patches, it's, yeah. you know. Um, well, listen, I've enjoyed today. It's good banter. Sorry, Ruffy, that you couldn't be involved yeah. at all. Not at all. Um, <laughs> Did you feel left out today, Robbie? It's good to be good. It was good, to the guest, so it was good, good having to, a bit of banter, yeah, wasn't it? Just a quick story about David Martindale because absolutely, well, I can't wait till he's up at Fur Park on Saturday because you get some guys that join in the fun with the fans that are sitting above him. He's absolutely brilliant. He's a top, top man, and what I like about him, and you know what I mean by this, Peter, he takes a joke. Yes. When I did the Player of the Year awards last season. Uh, I was stood there with the mic, I was just about to introduce the aforementioned Dick Campbell who was speaking at it and David Martindale and all the boys were sitting up in the corner, right? And David Martindale was in the papers that week, he had trouble, real bad trouble with kidney stones. So I, when I stood up in front of the crowd, I says, David, how's the, how's the kidney stones? Oh, they're giving me jip, Tam, they're giving me... I says, David, you, you, you must know someday it can get you some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be fair to him. Oh, he, yeah. he was howling. Well, that's what you need, a laugh. Always Absolutely. laugh about Scottish Fatma. And on that note, thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>